Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to another We Can Workshop. It's great to have you with us today. For those I haven't met before, my name is Carrie Ramsey, and I'm the project manager for the We Can Project, which is led by Queen's University. And over the last few years, we were just saying off camera that we have served more than 1,500 women identifying entrepreneurs. And uh, this workshop today is just one more workshop where we're able to bring in local resources and talk about ways that we can enhance our businesses for an affordable price, right? And obviously today we're talking about a grant and I know uh, grants are so fantastic. We're so grateful that this one is available. We're gonna learn a little bit more today about who's eligible, how you can apply it to your own business possibly. And if it's not a great fit for you, maybe you know someone that it is a fit for. So as we're getting started today, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself in the Zoom chat if you feel comfortable doing that. We'd love to learn a little bit more about where you're connecting from and what your business is. And while you're taking a moment to do that, I'll acknowledge that Queen's University is situated on the ancestral territory of the Anishinaabe and the Haudenosaunee peoples. And it working together with women entrepreneurs of all backgrounds has been such, um, such a great opportunity for us here at the We Can Project. We truly value diversity and the richness, richness of conversation and collaboration that comes with a community like this one. And this only comes when we honor and respect each other's culture and heritage. And in particular, I'd like to acknowledge the indigenous peoples whose resilience, culture and business philosophies have been such an important part of our shared history. Miigwech and welcome to everyone. It's so great to have you all here today. Thanks for those of you who are introducing yourselves in the Zoom chat. We've got um, one power hour today, I wanna call it today, with Sarah and Micah from Kingston Economic Development. Uh, it's so great to have you both with us. I'm gonna hand you the virtual microphone. Micah, I believe that you are gonna be starting off. Uh, let us know, what is Canada Digital Adoption Program all about? It's over to you. Thanks so much for joining us. Hello, ev hello everyone. Um, thanks for everyone for joining us. Uh, it's a pleasure to be speaking to everyone about CIDAP. Um, my colleague is also here, yeah, Sarah. She would also be talking about um, digital services and consultations that Kingston Economic Development offers to the people of Kingston and around Kingston, surrounding areas within Kingston. So I'll be going straight into the presentation. Um, if you have any questions, um, just put them in the chat. Um, Sarah and Kel would handle the, do moderate the conversation and um, questions, we would handle all questions after the presentation is done. So, CEDAP, the full meaning of CEDAP, which is Canada Digital Adoption, was, okay, so let me tell, let me first start by telling everyone about who we are, which is Kingston Economic Development. So we are a separate um, non-for-profit agency, arm of the city of Kingston. We are like the sales and marketing arm of Kingston. Our major goal and aim is to promote Kingston and encourage development, entrepreneurship, encourage businesses to come invest, um, encourages, encourage businesses to expand and grow within Kingston. Because what we see that is if Kingston is able to grow, it's if, if we're able to allow help Kingston grow, all businesses can grow and the economy grows as well. And it benefits every everyone in Kingston. And that's basically what we do every day we come to office at Kingston Economic Development. So the team, which is me, Micah, and Sarah, have also dropped our email address and our extension. So after you can always reach out to us, depending on if we're not able to answer some questions for you or further down, you have some discussions you would like to have or consultations with us. So an overview of CDAP. So CDAP is a program, is a program that was launched by the federal government post-COVID because they wanted to encourage the adoption of e-commerce and they wanted businesses to migrate online and to expand and grow. And then um, that was the brain, that was the brainchild of CDAP. It's a $1.4 billion investment. Um, it's targeted at small medium and small medium enterprises within the whole of Canada. We have we have it in Ontario, we have it in New Brunswick, Quebec. Um, Saskatchewan, in the, um, almost all provinces under under Canada, and basically, like I said, is to encourage the is to encourage 
businesses to adapt digital technologies to help grow and scale their business and expand their business. And that is why we at Kingston Economic Development, we see this as an opportunity to help grow the economy within Kingston and around Kingston. Around Kingston. So what are the businesses that are eligible for CDAP, right? So first and first, we support businesses within the Kingston area. So we're talking of Kingston, Napani, Highland, Lower List, Forensic, all the 1,000, all 1,000 islands and when I know pay everywhere around Kingston, we support businesses. We can handle businesses within that region. The, the other thing with CEDAP, it, it's not for non-profit. So it's for for profit businesses because we want to encourage businesses to grow. And that is why we support businesses that are consumer facing, um, businesses that are for profit. And the eligibility requirement, I know it looks like a lot, but it's really, there are just few key points you have to concentrate on because most, most businesses we're talking to today are in Kingston. So one of the tricky part where people have challenge understanding CDAP is around the one employer or 30,000 revenue a business should have. So, and I will make that simple as, if you're a business owner and you have an employee, you are eligible for CEDA. So if you notice, there is an all in this statement because if you have one employee, automatically you are eligible for CEDA. If you do not have one, if you don't have an employee, but your revenue is 30,000 and above, but you are also eligible for CEDA. So you need to have one. We've, we, a lot of businesses have both. So we see businesses that have four, two or more staffs and also have a revenue of over 30,000 that automatically they are eligible for the grant. If you have I, one, if Mike, you have Can one, I just slide in with a quick question right there? Okay. Because uh, I do get questions around this. Um, when you say one employee, does that have to be a full-time employee? Can it be a contract employee? Maybe somebody you, you know, bring in from time to time. Can it be a part-time? What is your definition of employee? So it has to be a full, full, full-time employee over the period of three months. Yes, so that's the that's the anchor to that. So a full time employee that has that is with you over three months. So could it be a student over the summer? <laughs> over the summer. <laughs> ah. These are the questions we get. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, I wouldn't say we we would. Yes, we yes we can. So the students would be working with the business for three over three months. Yeah. And after the summer, would the students still be working with the business? Um, yeah, it may may or may not. Some of them okay. would go back to school. Yeah. So there are some there are some special cases where we have to work one on one with the business to find a way to make them eligible for the program. But that those are one of those cases. Um, another requirement is when you adapt the program, there is a duration of six months. So. Depending on the pro, the, depending on the project scope and the description and how you want to use the fund, you should be able to handle. You should be able to maintain the plan for a duration of six months. These um, requirements are not stringent, but they're very easy and um, a lot of businesses find it very easy to meet the eligibility criteria. And that moves us to what makes a business not legible, right? Can because I slide in one more question, Micah? Yes, you can. <laughs> Sorry, I'll try not to do this a lot, but if we go back to that 30,000 figure, yes, you just want to describe that would be revenue, not profit, obviously. No, revenue. And so it's really important that if someone is at least bringing in that gross, let's say, yes. that's what you're looking at is their gross revenue, correct? Yes, is that gross revenue. Yes, so I know some people may think, oh, um, profit, but no, it's gross revenue as well, which is easy to move into the program because small businesses, they, they, they always have one of both, right? Either they have more than one employee or a revenue of 30,000. Yeah. So what makes a business not legible? So the grant is focused, like I said earlier, is focused at small and small businesses. So we're not, we can't, the grant doesn't uh, if I franchise, if I franchise of more than two, um, two, two um, brick and mortar store, you are not eligible for the grant. We are not giving the grant to real to real estate brokers 
We are not giving it to um, more, uh, marketing agencies that are um, how would how do I do drop shipping and things like and things within that stuff. Uh, we don't. Well, the grant is not focused without. It's also not for B two B businesses because we want it to impact directly the the city. So B two B businesses, the grant doesn't apply to those kind of businesses. And um, the documents you actually need when so, when filling up the grants, we, we don't ask for much, which is we just want to confirm your business is registered, right? Which is an incorporation docu your incorporation document, which you upload on the portal and show us the proof that your business has has one of both. Either you show us your, P, uh, your PD7A for your employee payroll that you are, you have the, um, this employee, and you you have more than one you have more than one employee apart from yourself, or your revenue, your tax, which is um, you made a revenue of over thirty thousand. Those are the two documents what we require. Two simple documents, no, not a lot of paperwork, because we're trying to make the process as easy and simple as it is, right? Um. And that is that is it in terms of documentation that we ex that we need from businesses. Those are those two. Those are the two documents we we are asking for. And now we move on to if you if you are eligible for the business, what can the money? What is the money allowed? What what do you use the money for? Which is um because a lot of businesses with every grant we understand there are restrictions to how to how they work. You can't just get a grant and use it for anything you want. So I, I try to make it as simple as possible. Mm -hmm. So if you're a small business that wants to build a website, that wants to build a website, the grant covers that. If you're a small brick and mortar business that wants to give, expand your website, maybe um, you already have a website and you want to incorporate e-commerce into your website, right? You want it that people can order on your website. You want to add a... Um, maybe the Uber plugin to your website. You want to add a shopping cart to your website. You want to add a CRM tool to the back end of your business. Um, the, grant, the grant covers all of those, right? If you also want to do SEO, search engine optimization, the grant also covers that. But you cannot use, the, the, the limitation is you cannot use the total 2,400 just for SEO management. It has to, it has to tie into other e-commerce functions. So obviously, if you are expanding your website to have a, a an e-commerce function, you're adding SEO, search engine optimization, on top of that as an added strategy, right? That is something the grant also covers. We also the grant also covers social media promotion. So you've built your website, you've done your you've done your SEO. You want to do a little bit of Instagram, Facebook, Twitter ads, Google ads. The grant can also help. The grant also covers such transactions as well. For and the grant also covers back end solutions. So there are some businesses that want to implement a new back end solution. It could be Salesforce. It could be QuickBooks. It could be um, Sarah. What other back end solutions? Um, HubSpot as well. There, so there are different back end solutions for maybe for managing accounting system. So if you if a business wants to integrate an accounting system for themselves, the, the grant also covers that as well. The grant covers hardware purchase, but it's very limited. So you can only use 20%, 20% of the grant to maybe buy a point of sales hardware system. You want to buy an iPad so that when people come to the store, they can check out faster. The grant can only cover 20% of that purchase. So those are a little bit of the technical restrictions as regards making hardware purchase with the with the grant. If you also want to recruit um, a marketing agency to help you develop a marketing strategy and execute it, the grant also covers things like that as well. So things the grant doesn't cover because we, as we said earlier, every grant has has limitations to them. You can't use the grant to pay for your internet bill. That 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 doesn't go with the grant. You can't also use the grant to do printing and signage. So you want to change your logo. You want to print business cards. 
you want to paint your office, you want to paint the store, the grant is not, the grant doesn't cover such purchases, right? And um, you can use the grant to pay salary. You can use the tag, you can use the grant to also pay for fine or make a purchase of land, property. Um, those are things the grant doesn't cover and it's not covered by the grant. You also can use the grant for drop shipping as well, right? So those are things the grant doesn't cover as well. And there is a there is a long list of um, there's a long list of things the grant doesn't also cover as well. And maybe I, I can run through. So you can use the grant to pay for your mortgage. You can use the grant to pay for hospital bill, entertainment, and you can use the grant to travel. Um, you can use it for lobbying and paying your rent also. You can use the grant to pay your rent or pay your mortgage as well. Those are things not legible for the cost of the grant. I will look also like to add something to the ineligible expenses. So if you are looking to do just content, let's say for your social media, that's another cost that the grant doesn't cover. Mm -hmm. So keep in mind that and also upgrading your existing website or redesigning, it's also not eligible. So it has to be a new website that you start from scratch or if you have an existing website and you want to add certain functionality, like enable users to make a purchase or to fill out a contact form, then that would be covered. So just keep in mind those details. Yeah. So you, you. you can't hire someone to do your content, but you can hire them to do your strategy. It's I heard earlier, right? Yes. So yes. The the strategy and implementations, but it has to be e-commerce related related. Yeah, so to to let me let me own in on let me dive in on that. So um and it goes back to what yes, so what I said here, yeah, which is um so you 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 hire a business and the business has given you, oh, you need to do this to your website, you need to do SEO, you need to also run social media ads, right? That is a digital strategy that all ties back into the e-commerce of the website because obviously once you expand your website to have e-commerce functions, the next step is to do a search engine optimization to drive traffic to the website. While with that, you also now add social media advertising as well, which all drives traffic to the website. So in that aspect, the grant covers that system as a whole, right? Um, you can't, you can't, we can't, the grant wouldn't cover a business that says they want to use the total grant for just search engine optimization. Because then if you don't have a, an e-commerce website, why do you, why do you want to, why do you want to pour all the money into search engine optimization? Because you drive traffic to the website, but people can not purchase from the website. That does, that's, that's the disconnect in, in that strategy. Sorry, I know we were going to hold some questions, but it just seems relevant. Um, Jen was asking, is there a place to go where all the do's and don'ts are listed? I did put the Kingston and Best Kingston website where the eligibility not criteria and the application is listed. Is that the best place to go or is there somewhere else you would suggest? Yes, all the information is on our website. So if you go to our website, Kingston Economic Invest Kingston, on that business programs, you'll see Digital Adoption Canada CDAP. All the details from what makes a business legible, what makes a business illegible, the cost that it covers, the cost that it doesn't cover, how to reach me as well. My email, my phone number is there. Um, everything is on our website, fully transparent on the website. And the information. I just try not to make the slide too filled up with information. So I'm just putting a bit of everything to make it easy for people to understand and not to go too deep into it because we could go hours talking about. And it sounds like if people have a question, not to hold back, but to contact you and ask them your specific questions. So don't be deterred. Have a conversation with Sarah and Micah and see where it goes. Yeah. And what we over over the years, we've come to realize businesses have different nuances to how CDAP can work for them. So sometimes it's us sitting down with a business and seeing how we can align to make sure, because we, we we our goal is not to turn down businesses, is to accept as much business as possible to take advantage of the grant. So let me just walk through the process of how it works, right? So if you go to the Kingston Economic Development website under CDAP, 
there is a form there you, are, you fill to apply for CEDAP. And that form, once you fill that form, it comes to me. Um, I would look through your application. What is required is um, your contact details, the business, the business details, where the business is located, the business, federal business number, um, how many employees you have, proof of the employees you have, um, your revenue, proof of the revenue, you upload your there's a a color, there is a a, a bar there for you to upload the file to show. And um basic information and how to contact you and how to reach the business, right? And after that application is gotten to me, in the application, you're also supposed to give us an overview of what you want to use the grant for. So an example could be a small coffee shop. A small coffee shop wants to have a new wants to have a new website and they want people to be able to place an order on the website so they can handle it before people walk in. And they want to also integrate DoorDash or Uber Eats into the website. And they want people to be able to check out and give out coupons or loyalty program loyalty programs on their website as well. That's the overall, that's the overall project description. Then there is also a section which is use of funds. So in the use of funds, you just give us a rough estimate, right? Which is a uh, you're going to spend 1000 to build the website. You are going to spend 400 for SEO, search engine optimization. You are going to spend another 400 for social media promotion. You are going to spend another 600 to purchase the domain name, create content, and then um, other digital activities you have. I would review all of those and see how, see if it meets the criteria as the legibility criteria. And once that, once that is done, I would reach out to the business and there are three documents we are supposed we are, the business is supposed to sign, which is an assertion document, a survey, because we're also trying to get feedback about the program as well. So a survey and a grant agreement that you are agreeing to take this grant and do what you have said you're going to do with the money, right? And the duration for you to execute the project is 90 days. That's three months. So once the document, the final document is signed, you've been approved for the grant. You have 90 days to execute the project you've already described to us, right? And the, the fastest way we, we want people to go about this, because in the past, we've noticed that people apply for the grant. And um, after they've been approved to get the grant, that's when they start talking to marketing agencies or talking to consultant or freelancer. And that takes one month and a half because there is a back and forth. Uh, you go back and forth about, uh, oh, this is what I want. This is what I want. Um, can we do this? Can we do this? What covers? And that eats into the, the, the st stipulated time for the project, right? So what we want, what we want people to do, what we want businesses and entrepreneurs to do is first get the consultant you'll be working with. Let them help you draft the project description, the use of fund, the strategy, and give you a timeline that give you a timeline starting that, stating that once you've been approved, these are the milestones and we would meet the 90 days stipulated timeline to execute the project. That way it's it's faster and you're able to hit the ground running. So you, you get approved for the grant, you tell the consultant this is it, and this and the project is on is on the move, right? That's how we want businesses to think about it because it also saves us time and it saves the business time as well. Which because you never know how things the landscape is changing as well. So one thing we also do is once a business is deemed legible and approved for the grant, we have an e-commerce advisor attached to that business. What's the role of the e-commerce advisor? The e-commerce advisor is, is a technical expert that helps you throughout the duration of the project. What do they do? So digital can be very technical. It can be very technical. And as a small business owner, they are trying to run your business. You don't want to add the technical jargons on top of what you're already trying to do. And that's where the e-commerce advisor comes in. So the e-commerce advisor can be a liaison between you and the consultant. 
so that because they're there for your that the e-commerce advisor is is with you for your best interest so they are with you to support your business and make sure that the project is ex executed on on the set date and everything is moving smoothly and if there's any technical issues they can step in to see how to resolve it that's the role of the technical advisor so basically a technical advisor has about 10 hours for a business per week they can sit down with you discuss oh this is this is the best way you know, to benefit your business this is how the website should go this is what direction your your strategy should go this is in what direction your seo should go they would advise you and also work with the consultant or the marketing marketing agency you employed to work with your project and they're just basically there for support and to monitor the progress and make sure you meet the stipulated deadline and after after you the a business has executed the project the next step is for the business to send us the invoice they have done the project they've launched the website they've done the seo they've run the ads they've paid for all of this send us the invoice that you have paid for all of this we would go through the invoice and compare the invoice with the project description and use of funds filled during the initial application stage the reason for that is in the past we realized businesses and that's not to say that along the way business can't change their plans but we don't want them to go out of scope of what was stipulated so an example could be initially they've said the use of funds they would use and maybe a, a, a thousand to build a website but along the way they realize oh they want to use a particular platform and some added features that they did not know during the application stage that bumps the budget that bump, that puts the budget of the website maybe to 1250 or 1350 that's allowed why we have to inspect the invoice is to make sure the funds were used appropriately were used correctly as well so um we don't want a business saying they want to launch a website and they want to do SEO and they want to do advertising and they use the the total grant to just run social media ads. That was that's different from what they initially proposed in the application. So that is the that's why there is that we need to see the evidence of what was done. An example, another example is if you tell us you are going to build a website, you are sending us the link to the website. We want to see the website is live and running. The website is functional. We're able to, people are able to go on the website and place an order and it's everything is working as stipulated on the application process, right? And once all those check out, a, we'll sign a template, we'll, a template form will be sent to the business that these are all the receipts provided from the business. Confirm, make sure we are not missing any invoice and make sure on your end as a business, you a an invoice didn't fall through the track through the crack or is missing. Once that is confirmed, we will start the process to reimburse the business back the two thousand four hundred. Now, another um, notice: we realize sometimes in executing a digital plan, right? As we say, you may spend more than two thousand four hundred, but what the grant can cover, it's a cushion right to just help you pay part of your budget so if your whole digital budget was six thousand the grant can we can only reimburse you two thousand four hundred that's i hope that i hope that's also clear because we've had questions where people say ah but my my plan costs about four thousand um what will happen to the balance you cover the balance <laughs> as a business with the grant is not meant to cover everything but it's just meant to be a cushion to help you achieve what you want to what you set out to do right and so this 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 table is just showing how a business is deemed legible and um, how we do the paperwork and how everything is processed now this is when a business is not deemed legible an example is a um, you send an application and you say you just want to do SEO, SEO for your website. Now, what happens is I review the application and I look at the business and I'm like, oh, this business is not legible, but we don't send you away, right? That's not that's not what we do. We want you to take advantage. So we, I would assign one of the ECs 
to sit down with the business, look at the business from top to bottom, analyze the business, see how see other channels and other means of strategy they can use to grow that business through digital means, and that would make them legible for the grant. We've had experiences where people, um, we ha we've had businesses that said, "Oh, they've already done their website. All they want to do is um, all they want to do is social media, is social media promotion, and oh, since that is a they are, they, are, they are not legible for the grant. And we've had ECS look at the business and gone through the business back from top to bottom. And they realized, oh, there are other features you can add into your website, right? And um, you can add SEO into your website. You can add content creation into your website. You can add a loyalty system into your website. That now makes the business eligible for the grant because they've now increased and there are now more opportunities they are taking advantage of to grow and scale, scale the business, right? And that takes that takes a while because there's a the ECA would have to do a bit of research and sit down with the business owner, and then the business would then come back, right, legible for the grant, and the application process starts, and we tackle everything, and eventually they are also reimbursed with um, the refund as well. And this is basically the, like I said, investkingston.ca, that is where you would, you can apply for the grant. You would see it once you go to Invest Kingston on that business programs, you see digital, Canada Digital Adoption Program, start your application here. By clicking on this button, a form, you the form would, would come up and you it's a PDF form. So you are able to fill and upload your, your tax document and your, and PD7A document as well. And I'll hand it over to Sarah, who will be talking about digital support for businesses. Thank you, Moika. Uh, so again, I'm Sarah. I'm a digital advisor here at Kingston Economic Development. Micah, can you go to the next slide, please? So basically, um, I've been facilitating another digital grant that unfortunately is closed by this time, but we are crossing fingers that they will reopen again. If that's going to happen, I will sure let Carrie know. So she help us to spread the word. And basically what I'm doing meanwhile is to help business owners uh, with any questions that you may have in the digital space. So I just want to make clear that we are here to guide you and to give you some uh, lights in this topic that at first glance can be very easy or seem very easy, but as you dive deeper, it might get a little bit more complicated, uh, but I'm here to help you, to support, to give you tools and to also uh, guide you through certain platforms that you are not familiar with. So just to mention some of the guidance that our support that I can provide is with web, uh, web design, social media strategy, not management. I won't manage your social media. I will uh, help you or like guide you on how to do so. Um, also e-commerce strategies, how to drive more traffic to your website, for example, email marketing campaigns, uh, if you don't know how to create your content, then I can help you and guide you through with some tools that are very easy to use and that you can bulk all your content for a whole month, schedule it, and then just forget about it. Um, and much more that I can do for you. If you already have a digital presence, I can also do some audit and provide some recommendations and help you and guide you through on how to do these changes. So there are tons of ways I can support you with within the digital space. And for sure, if it is out of my scope of work and I, because I don't execute these strategies in my, in the every day, I may, I will make sure that I can connect you with someone that works uh, in that, in the every day and will be able to help you further. Uh, but if you are right now lost and you don't know where to start, I'm here. Uh, I'm your girl <laughs> to support you. And I think that will be uh, from my side. And if there is any news about the other grant, I will let you know.
You're still on mute, Micah. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I think um to add to Sarah, Sarah holds um digital workshops. I think Sarah is weekly or bi-weekly. So we are doing one monthly, okay. uh, but it's for to spread more, to spread the word about the grant, the digital, the Canada Digital Adoption. And I've been doing this in person at the library. Uh, so I give you some examples on, like I dive deeper on the tools that you could like do or implement with this money. Um, but right now it's just that one that I'm running. Okay, okay. thank you, sir. And um, this is a business that we've helped that uh, took advantage of the grant. And um, Mills by Mom, I think a few of you should know the business here in Kingston. And yes, in 2022, she took advantage of the grant and um, she was able to build a website and expand our food delivery. And we also have businesses in Kingston. Um, by our database, we've helped over 160 businesses in Kingston with with the grant as well um, over over the past two years. So um, we, we plan on that number being higher as we go for that. So I think we're, we're done now. We move to the question. Right, question and I know that we were answering a few as we were going, so I'm not sure if anyone has one, but feel free to put it in the Zoom chat. Um, and I think uh, it's important to signal that, you know, in the process, you do need to spend the money up front. You're not receiving a grant and then spending their money because that's just not the way the government works. <laughs> uh, so um, that's and I just want to bring up photography. Um, is that an eligible expense? Because a lot of people get photos taken of their products for their e-commerce site. And that's kind of an expensive cost. Is that covered? No, that is not covered. So that will count under uh, the content development and everything that's content is not eligible. We all know that SEO at the end of the day is content. So that's the only way you can mask the content portion by right, just okay. saying SEO, but it's going to be implemented in your e-commerce um, somehow to make some optimizations. But maybe put alternate text on the images so they are accessible, but not the photo shooting itself. Great. Um, I think, yeah, I think you answered all of my questions and I don't see any in the Zoom chat. I'll just give it about uh, another 30 seconds or if you wanna put your hand up, if you have a question, otherwise we'll wrap up for today. And you do actually, if you folks wanna put your emails one more time on the screen in case uh, somebody wants to reach out afterwards, I find a lot of people do that, just, you know, they might have a particular question. And of course, for all of our um, viewers on YouTube later on, uh, I think this is the key information that you wanna follow up with Sarah and Micah, uh, should you have further questions. Oh, one final one I have, when does this program end? You know, so how quickly do people need to move on this? Do we have um, an end date? Yeah, currently it's, um, it will be renewed in March, 2020, 2025. That is up for debate, but for the current batch now is we're running to March 2025. Okay, great. That's good. So it doesn't have to be done next week, but your point of do your research and then apply with the good figures so that you know that you actually have, you know, market, you're not just creating numbers out of thin air. Yeah, you definitely yeah. have time to do that. Excellent. Yeah. I, oh. And another thing that I like to add is that you cannot cover any incur expenses before right. being approved. So yes, that's, that's very important. Very important. Yeah. yeah. So um, what's what's what Sarah is saying is, if you've already executed something, the grant doesn't cover that. It has to be something fresh. Yeah. So and that's why I'm really I'm really pushing that businesses should speak to the consultants while they are about to apply that helps them because when you speak to a digital consultant so if you speak to sarah you fix a call with sarah and you tell sarah um this is your business you want to apply for you want to apply for sida sarah is able to look at your business give you the proper description and the use of funds and that's that what what that what then happens is it reduces the amount of time you will spend during the application stage. So that way is, oh, I'm not, I'm not having to 
tell you, oh, you need to work on this, you need to work on this. And when there is a back and forth and going over email, that can take a week, two weeks, time is going. But if you're able to speak to a consultant, speak to the freelance person or speak to the agency, they would sit down with you and fill the application, right? They fill the application because we speak technical terms. What they feel, I would understand it immediately and I'm able to fast track the application. So what I can tell people is um, when you when you send, when you apply for CDAP, the application phase um, for us to review the application, send you the document to sign, that would take roughly three to four, three to five, three to five business days, right? And sometimes it's faster because um, I get on my decks, um, I've, I've reviewed some applications, I go through the project description, the use of funds, it's on point. Immediately I see the project description is on point, the use of fund is on point, the business is around, the business falls within the area, they have that document, I would send you the email that day. And I've seen cases where I send the email to the business around 9 a.m. The business replies me by 2 p.m., signed the documents, and that day they've been approved for the grant already. So yeah, that's good. great. It sounds so, like that's a, that, that conversation with Sarah would likely be a, a good step, like you say, just to do that consultation. Do you have a list of preferred marketing agencies? Because if somebody doesn't know of any agencies, and just I'll slide in a note here, any weekend clients who are a part of our weekend Facebook community, you can always post in there and say, hey, does somebody have a, a recommendation or a referral? And you can get great referrals in that community. But Micah or Sarah, do you have a list of preferred marketing agencies or what are your thoughts? Uh, I just shared through the chat the link to the directory. Uh, oh, great. Okay, yeah. thank you for that. So we're not, pick, we're not um, giving a preferential list, but it's out of, based on our research, uh, we are able to um, aggregate all the digital business in Kingston. What, um, what we advise people to do is go through the directory um Look at, go to that website, the business, the marketing agency website, see projects they've done. If you like those projects, right? Um, see the, see the client's base, people they've worked to it. They may, they may have worked with someone within your network and you're able to reach out to that person and be like, oh, I saw this, I saw this business and built your website for you. How was that service? And you're able to also get feedback and, um, do your own little bit of research, right? As to the right agency that would work within your budget, within the stipulated time for you. Um, that's right. that's the best advice we can give. Right, I love have. it. All right, well, I think you've given us great uh, information today. Thank you so much for your time, Micah and Sarah, and to everyone who joined us. And for those of you who are watching from the future, uh, this is a great opportunity. Um, and so we're, we're grateful for you sharing the information with us today. Thanks everyone for joining us. Enjoy the rest of your day. Take care. Thank you.